Welcome to On Texas Football. I'm Bobby Burton. I'm joined by Rod Babers and Jerry Hamilton. A little special edition here uh, as we look towards the 2024 football season. Longhorns just a couple of months away from getting back on the football field. Uh, we asked the YouTube On Texas Football community a question last week, and it was kind of interesting. Uh, Matt, our producer, will you please, please bring it up? I asked folks what they thought the strength of the team will be in 2024 quarterback at 29 percent wide receiver at 15 percent look at the offensive line guys uh 46 percent defense wow. end, five percent five percent coaching as well um is that about how y'all figured that that would uh, come out before we get into the individual aspects of where we really think texas has some strategic advantages is that y'all agree with that offensive line number one strength at this point I, I think I would probably go quarterback, maybe then O line, just because of the just kind of overall of the value of the position. There's no question. Uh, bringing back, you know, four of your five starters on the O line. Texas has been stockpiling at that position for quite a while now. And now we can see developments happening. Guys like Christian Jones being drafted into the NFL. So I can see why Longhorn fans are really excited about that group. It's been a while, guys, since we've had this much upside and high level time on the O line. The first Boy, round it, of a guy is on the O-line. A long, long time, Rod B. Yeah, long, 20 long. years. Yeah, since I was on campus, that kind of, yeah, <laughs> that, that's how long it's been. <laughs> I think experience 100%. Uh, I, I can see why people voted on offensive line. I think the right side's going to have something uh, to kind of prove in pass protection is what I would say. Uh, fair enough. And, and, all, and quarterback is is it where yeah. I want to start because I think that's, to me, that was the biggest – positive actually i had when we started talking about have, doing this video guys uh we were talking about what are the one what are the things quarterback was mine you have a th third year starter in quinn ewers who comes off of a 12 and 2 season a year ago yeah he missed a couple of games but you know he is now comfortable uh, clearly in steve sarkeesian's offense yeah. i mean he is the guy that's dealing it out and making it go um, so I think that that is a big one, but it's not just him. It's also what we saw behind him in the spring game in Arch Manning and Trey Owens. Uh, there's a competence level there that is unlike maybe any I've seen at Texas in decades. And I'm, I'm serious about that. When's the last time Texas had three quarterbacks on campus where you would say, okay, those guys all have a chance to, to legitimately – play and two of them already have experience in games um it's just a rare rare opportunity texas has with the experience of a quinn ewers in the third year and then you also add in uh arch manning who's got a couple games underneath his belt now uh, a full year in the system as well and trey owens who already has a semester uh after uh enrolling early i just feel like they're better situated this year than they were a year ago with Malik Murphy as, as the primary backup, right? Even yeah. though he's talented. So uh, I look at it, and I thought that quarterback was the strongest point. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the other – we talked about it and agreed yeah. that quarterback was one of the stronger points heading into this. Let's move on to some other strengths, okay? And if y'all want to comment on quarterback later, we can certainly do this. Jerry, I'm going to leave it to you. What is your next point that you would like to make from a strength of 2024 team perspective. I think roster one through 85, uh, fastest team Texas has had since Sark has been at Texas. Team speed, quickness, all of that combined. And I know that's saying something. I've said this before because Xavier Worthy's in the Hall of Fame with before he ever takes a snap in the NFL in some regard, right? Then A.D. Mitchell went out and ripped it up. Uh, but I just think this is a three straight top five recruiting classes. Texas continues – to get more and better players out of the portal. And you just look one through 85, and this is going to be the fastest team Texas has fielded under Steve Sarkeesian to date. And, and there's a few reasons I say that. I think Worthy, there's not anybody as fast as Worthy. But I think the wide receiver position as a whole is faster this year. I mean, you bring in Isaiah Bond's a 10-4 guy. Ryan Wingo's a 10-5-5 guy in high school. Silas Bolden was a 10-6 guy. And I know I'm just throwing out 100-meter times, but that's kind of one way to explain this. Texas has more speed quickness in the whole receiver room this year than they had last year, in my opinion. Then you go to tight end. 
Jatavion Sanders is a hell of a player. Rod Babers has put it on paper. He's put it on video. Why? Mari Nyblak's a better athlete. He's a faster guy. He's going to scare people down the field a little bit more in a different way. You look at the running back position. Jonathan Brooks is a hell of an instinctive running back. Um, Jaden Blue is top three fastest player in the program at running yeah. back. Yeah. Maybe second. Maybe in the conversation for first. So you're either going to be more a faster team, and where you're going to see that out of the backfield at the receiver at the running back position because Jaden Blue can get down the field. But then you look at some other positions where Texas added. Andrew Makuba is an upgrade in football speed at safety from what Texas had last year. If you replace Jaron Thompson with Andrew Makuba, how much faster did you just get? I mean, a lot more faster. Javion Cole is a speed upgrade at corner over Terrence Brooks. Doesn't mean Terrence Brooks isn't going to be a really good player at Illinois, but year two, Manny Muhammad, Gavin Holmes back another year, adding Javion Cole, who ran a sub 10 7 in high school fast. Then you get to quick. Colin Simmons and Trey Moore are more explosive 10 yard guys than anybody Texas had off the edge last year. D tackle, they don't have a Byron Murphy level athlete in there that's done it. Jare Bledsoe, pound for pound, maybe the best athlete in the program, but he's got to go prove it on Saturdays. I just think the continued top five recruiting classes and the, what Texas did in the portal, this is the fastest team one through 85 Sarks had. Kind of a fat, it's kind of a, it's not just fast because you start talking about some big guys. It's quick and athletic. Quick and athletic. That that adding in there, Rod. Uh, your in your preview, and when we were talking before this show started, you mentioned something that I I wanted to give get you to talk about here, and that's scheme versatility. Yeah. What did you mean by that as a strength? Because we saw that list earlier, and they had coaching at five percent. Yes, uh, they did. <laughs> they may or may not be right. The point is. You you brought up something called scheme versatility. What were you talking about there and, and what you want to go over? Well, we can just start on offense. I think defense is going to go through some of this as well. But, you know, Sark, uh, he's as a coach, you can still see him evolving and growing real time. And you can actually look at it in his scheme. Um, you know, I've talked about this ad nauseum, of course, with the pony package. All right. Uh, but Sark, when he first came here, uh, he brought back some of the concepts that he learned in Atlanta following Kyle Shanahan with that 21 personnel package. But his spin was to use two tailbacks, thus the pony package. And when he got to Texas with Rojo and Bijan, he used it, didn't use it a lot, but he, he sprinkled it in there. It's kind of one of their boutique personnel groupings. But then he doubled down on he understood he looked at the uh, the productivity of, a, of that package and said, this, I got to add this to my repertoire. And now he need to do that. He brought in a guy like Brennan Marion, who had, had a uh, who specialized in a go, the go-go offense, which was a two-tailback offense with a triple option run game and a West Coast passing game. And so I added that to his philosophy and ideology. So he's adding stuff. The 6-0 line package. I remember when they first broke out the 6-0 line package. It was actually in that um, – Man, was it a ULM game? I think it was where they broke it out, and Sark said that he he used it because they were they were trying to manufacture some depth at tight end, or it was contingency plans about depth at tight end. It actually wasn't. He was troubleshooting it because he wanted to break it out versus Alabama, and he did. And even Alabama has had a tough time trying to figure out what the hell's going on with this six O line package. They call it Big Eleven, Big Twelve. But how did he uh, expand his philosophy on that? Evolve it. He brought in Paul Chris, a guy, a special assistant head coach, who was known for extra O-line packages, the hippo package, the barge package when he was in the Big Ten. And they improved on the six O-line package. Yards per attempt went up from 22 to 23. Uh, yards per play, explosive play rate in the six O-line package improved. The play action pass rates in the six O-line package actually dropped. What Sark used the six O-line package, a little tidbit here for you, he actually used it to, 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 um, to basically facilitate straight drop back opportunities. For Quinn Ewers, you go look at the straight drop back opportunities in 2023 out of the 6-0 line package. It actually went up over the average of Quinn Ewers uh, normally in the offense because I think he thought they he had insulation um, in pass protection with the extra offensive lineman. So he's evolving that package from one year to the next uh, using, I think, some of Paul Chris's uh, philosophy in that as well. And I think every year he seems to add something a little more to it. I, I saw him add the cheat, uh, what they call the cheat motion, where you get the guys who are going in motion uh, toward the line of scrimmage and it gives them a running start in motion. He added that this year. That was something that Mike McDaniel had at uh, Miami broke out in 2022 uh, when he got the Miami job. And you see that Sark is looking at the 
the NFL. He's looking at some of the innovators uh, in offense all around football at the high, at the college and at the highest level in the NFL. And he's taking little tidbits uh, philosophically and he's adding to his offense. So his offense is a living, breathing thing that he keeps adding to it. That is advantage, ladies and gentlemen. That means that, you know, if you're trying to, uh, as a defensive coordinator, trying to figure out, trying to reverse engineer Sark's offense. You won't have a hard time because he's literally evolving it every year and adding more stuff to it. So that scheme versus him, when he first got to Texas, he was pretty much an 11 personnel guy and a 12 personnel guy. That was 90 something percent of your personnel groupings. Now we've added the pony package with 21 personnel. Now he's even sprinkling in some three back sets in there, some 20 personnel in there. Now we got the six O line package in there. Guys, it's hell having to uh, game plan for all of those those different packages. I only got so much time in practice. Now I got to devote top practice time to defending the 6-0 line package and the pony package and your 11 and all your 12 and all that kind of stuff. So that is a true advantage, folks. There are there's not that many systems around the country that are that diverse and have that much variety in their offense. And I think you're going to start seeing more of that on defense. I think Johnny Nance is going to bring some of that to the table defensively with a little bit more scheme variety. The reason it's a built-in advantage because your opposing coordinators, they got a game plan for that. They only got so much time in practice to teach these players the concepts and the uh, the basic rules of the game plan for that week. So you can automatically put them at a disadvantage having to prepare for so many different personnel groupings, concepts or different uh, uh, different sets and, and sets that you're trying to break out, whether it be offensively or defense. I think I think that scheme versatility, particularly on offense, I'm interested to your point at the very outset there, Jer- uh, Rod, is what it could mean on defense with the addition of Johnny Nansen. But we don't know for sure yet exactly how much they will do because they're not going to show that us all that in the spring no. game. Of yeah. course. I mean, so interesting there, scheme versatility on offense. Uh Jerry, the one that the T that the, the fans came back with is number one. And I, you know, I don't necessarily disagree with them. It, we talked about quarterback for us, but offensive line, that's one, that's one of those positions that you track and follow closely. Uh what, that's obviously a team strength heading into 2024. Yeah, I think it uh, offensive line obviously is for a number of reasons. And you start with you have a All American left tackle and a future first round pick. Texas hadn't had one of those in a while, so that alone may exact a strength, especially protecting a third year starting right handed quarterback. But then you go across the board, four starters return. DJ Campbell got his feet wet in a big way last year. If he makes a year one, the year two jump like he's expected to as a starter, then that offensive line gets even that much more better. I mean, you have so many starts at left guard and center, right? Jake Majors continues to ascend, a guy that probably gets the least love that should get more love, the most underappreciated Texas player. Maybe last year was Jake Majors. Then you go to right tackle. That's kind of right tackle, right guard, and pass pro is kind of what has to prove itself out, right? Cam Williams and DJ Campbell working in tandem in pass pro. We know they're going to be good in the run game. I mean, the right side of the run game could be devastating at times this year, Cam Williams and DJ Campbell. They're going to look at each other and say, all right, well, they're they're betting on who gets knocked to the ground first, DJ's man or Cam's man. I mean, I, I think Texas is going to be really good run blocking on the right side. Then you go to depth. I think we've talked about depth before as Texas and Kyle Flood have built this out. This is the first year I think we see the depth on the field. And maybe that's because there's a 12-team playoff and two off weeks in between, and one loss doesn't uh, cause panic in a coach's office if our playoff chances are gone uh, anymore. But I think, look, you're legitimately – you have seven to eight guys who are legitimate starters right now. And only five will start, and that's Cole Hudson and that's Neto. I think both those guys are going to play. I think Cole Hudson's strength is in pass protection. I think Neto can be a devastating run blocker, similar to DJ Campbell. So I think you're going to see Texas rotate more offensive linemen this year in games. Those guys are going to play more. That's a strength. Uh, Then when it goes to this, this is one one sign of the strength of an offensive line and what's being built. Brandon Baker was a five-star recruit coming out of modern day, and he had a really good spring. And he's not a threat to be a starter. That's when you know your offensive line's built at at Texas. And that build is almost complete. Is when you bring in a five star guy and you're not even, he's not even in the conversation at tackle. Three years ago, that guy's starting at Texas at tackle. Had no choice. No no choice. choice. Yeah. No choice. Now, the key, the key here for all of this, guys, to me, 
if it if this this offensive line can go from really good to Joe Moore Ward level, if they move people in the red zone in the run game, Rod, I, yep. I think that is I think they're going to be fine everywhere else. If they take a step moving people in the run game in the red zone, that's going to change Texas red zone efficiency and Steve Sarkeesian's play calling capabilities more than we can probably talk about on a video. Four year so, starter, four year starter at center two and Jake Majors guys. Yeah. They, they've got talent and experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And where they don't have ultra experience, they have enormous talent. Yeah. Like Cam Williams, right? And that's that's the mix that you want at an elite program. So I, th- I think there's a reason. Look, look, Con- Connor there. Robertson at center might start at 75 schools in the country. Mm-hmm. Wow. He's yeah, a really I- good player. He's a really good player. Let, okay. Let's go. Let's go on because I think offensive line, I think, I think we're good on that. I'm going to go to my next one, and I, I circled this, and I put defensive end. And, guys, the reason I put defensive Love end it. is look at this way. They're bringing back their two starters, Baron Sorrell and Ethan Burke. Justice Finkley is back as well. And then you add in what is essentially three newcomers. Yep. Not only Trey Moore in 14 and a half sacks from UTSA, but also the number one player in the state of Texas in Colin Simmons. Yep. And then they essentially got a freebie from Colton Vosick getting yep. healthy finally, right? Like a year ago, we were waiting to see if Col- but he wasn't healthy. So you add all those guys together and look, I don't know. We've talked about this, Jerry and, and Rod. I don't know how many sacks they'll have this year. I we can we can guess until the cows come home. All I know is their defensive in room after being I mean, look, when they got here in 2020, they didn't have enough defensive ends. When Jacoby yeah. Jones went down, they put Jet Bush out there, a converted linebacker. I remember that. Okay. And then teams just ran all over Texas for the next six weeks. Now they've got guys, and they've got different types of guys. they got guys that can get after the quarterback, like Moore, like Simmons, uh, probably like Vosick and, and Burke. They've got stronger guys like Vosick. And uh, Baron Sorrell, they can play the strong side too. I mean, Finkley, they, they've got not only depth and ability, but also versatility. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Bobby. A category than what we've seen Texas have, and certainly one of the team's strengths in 2024. Three years ago, if the edges walked in Brian or Akpo's uh, shop, he'd give out one cupcake. Now he's giving out six. Big difference. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Hey, Rod B, another one that we mentioned um, and, and talked about a little bit are the number of playmakers, like mm. true playmakers Texas yeah. has potentially on defense. Yes. Um, you know, who's going to make the key turnover? Who's going to make the big tackle? Uh, that sort of thing. Get, give people a sense for what you were thinking of when you talked about that, whether it was Manny Muhammad or Anthony Hill. Jade Barron, that sort of thing. Yeah, what basically the defense needs is they need their havoc rate to increase. Havoc rate these days is basically splash plays by the defense. We're talking about tackles for loss, sacks, PBUs, interceptions, forced fumbles, splash plays. And that's what Texas needs. And and I think a a part of that is just the personnel you have out there. You guys don't big on some guys are just ball hawks. They're ball-oriented defenders, ball-minded defenders. They think ball first. Manny Muhammad is one of those dudes, right? Uh, so he's going to make teams pay for testing him. They will try to test him early because I got a feeling, you know, Texas is going to play a little bit more bump and run. They played a little bit more bump and run last year in the last three games of the season. Didn't work out, work out well for them versus Washington. We saw them play more press. I think they're going to pick up where they left off and play a little bit more press on the field in the boundary side. And I think Malik Muhammad is going to shine. He will be tested. I think he'll make teams pay because he's a true ball hawk and he's a technician. He's both. I always have put my back seven defenders in three categories. If you're a ball hawk, you're a disruptor, or you're a technician, and or he's a technician and a ball hawk. Love that about his game. And with Jade Barron also, it's going to be a, a test for him this year too because, I mean, this is a guy that I think can be a ball hawk, but mostly he's a student of the game. And he can make some of those splash plays as well. Not just the PBUs. We saw that. Or the tackles for loss. And we saw that too. I think he can be a big guy can actually make some interceptions and get his hands on the football. So I love that you actually have playmakers, havoc 
minded defenders on your defense. And Anthony Hill is also one of those guys. But based on his ability to go sideline to sideline, his ability to be versatile, you can put him on the edge as an edge rusher. We saw a dynamic he could be as an edge rusher in big games versus Alabama. All uh, right, this is a guy that I think, depending on the situation, you can find a, a, a matchup advantage for him across the board, whether that be a twist and a stunt, lining him up outside and twisting and stunting them inside to go up against a much uh, you know less athletic offensive lineman, or whether that be starting him on the outside versus a weak pass, uh, pass blocking uh, offensive tackle, or maybe getting them line matched up against a tight end. I think this uh, with Johnny Nansen now in the mix. And he did this a lot in Arizona. They play a lot of games up front to try to get a matchup advantage, try to get their best pass rusher, one of their havoc-minded defenders, matched up against a weak blocker, whether that be a running back or a tight end. You're going to see some of that. So I think the first step in Texas getting more havoc plays is having more havoc players. And I think you got three of those in Anthony Hill. And you got Jade Barron. I think Malik Muhammad in that category. I'm hoping Derek Williams steps up this year and becomes one of those guys, gets his hands on the football, runs the alley a little bit better, delivers a pop, knocks some balls loose. I think he could be one of those guys too. So that's the only part of it. I mean, we saw Jalen Ford was naturally one of those guys, you know, ball-oriented defender, havoc-minded defender. They've had some of those guys in the past, but I think now you may have more than you've had in recent years. Got it. Uh, I, I, I agree with that. I uh, particularly love the idea of uh, the havoc-minded defender with Muhammad and Hill. And I think Barron is more that sneaky kind of guy that uh, kind of outwits some people at times. Yeah. Uh, right, I, I want to go to the next one. Uh, Jerry, you wrote down TD makers, touchdown makers as a big piece of the, the strength in 2024. What do you, what do you, what do you say about that? Why? Yeah, I think, I think Texas is going to be able to score the ball at different positions in different ways this year. Um, I, I think Amari Nyblak is a touchdown maker at tight end. I think he has a chance to make big plays. You know, JT Sanders made plays, maximized after the catch without being an explosive athlete. You saw Amari Nyblak against Texas. If he breaks one tackle, he may score on you because he is a high-level athlete that will run four or five at the NFL Combine. You look at wide receiver. Um, you just look at this the depth of these guys. Um, you know, Isaiah Bond obviously can score touchdowns. He can do it getting vertical. He can go up. and He's not the most, I think, consistent ball catcher, but you saw against Auburn, he makes big plays and scores touchdowns. Uh, I think Ryan Wingo is going to fall into that category as time goes on for Texas this year. Uh, Matthew Golden and Silas Bolden, both at receiver and in the return game. I think Texas got touchdown makers out of the portal then you go to running back and you look at it and Jaden blue is a touchdown maker whether that is a crease run or i think he is going to be double dangerous times two out of the backfield as a receiver the one thing uh that i've always talked about with Jaden blue seeing him in high schools he has some of the best hands if not best natural hands of any running back i've seen or i've covered and that and i mean hands down the field like when you go to seven on seven it's natural for him to go up in a catch radius and make a catch at full speed, make one cut up the field and get vertical. That Those things are very natural for him. So I look at Texas and say they have more touchdown makers this year. They have a lot of touchdown makers this year. And I think that's a strength of this team. And when you have a third-year starting quarterback and, and you have a lot of touchdown makers around it with an offensive mind like Steve Sarkeesian, that is a strength. And, again, I, I want to say this again. Matthew Golden, two kickoff returns for touchdown. Silas Bolden, punt return for touchdown last year. Plus, he's also a guy in the kickoff return game. And then to my last point on touchdown makers, they have more guys within the scheme, Rod, Bobby. Silas Bolden can catch it and do something with it. Xavier Worthy had that ability, right? You didn't really look at A.D. Mitchell in that way. You, you could get Bond, he could catch a slant, and he's gone. Jaden Blue catches the ball out of backfield. You got problems if he breaks the first tackle. Nyblack, if he breaks the first tackle, you got problems because there's going to be too much speed spread all over the field. Texas has a lot of touchdown makers this year. Good stuff. All right, mm -hmm. a couple other uh, ones that I want to go over uh, that I thought were, were good. Uh, depth at running back and wide receiver. Yeah. Uh, a year ago, Texas had to go to a true freshman as the starter uh, or co-starter with Jonathan Brooks. Now they've got Jaden Blue ready to go. Cedric Baxter's back for another year. Trey Weiser's look good in spots. And they have two freshmen in. Yeah. 
the depth is deeper at running back, and the depth is deeper deeper at receiver, even if the high-end guys at, re- at receiver were as good as you're going to get, basically. Yeah. Um, and so mm-hmm. there's two different pieces to that uh, right now. I just think the depth overall at running back and wide receiver will be valuable if you get into that 12, 13, 14 game rotation that we think Texas might be able to get into if they get into the college football playoffs. The other one that I want to mention is kicker. Uh, 50 field goals Burt Auburn has made Jerry Hamilton and and Rod Babers in his Mm. Texas career. That's a hell of a career. He's back for another year this year. Long of 54, uh, by the way, just recently got a scholarship as well. I definitely think maybe not punting right now, but kicking certainly a team string. All right, the last one I want to go over, and this is something that we all – we tried to think of the right word, uh, but the last one, Jerry, you came up with the word hunger or hungry. You feel like this is a hungry team based on what you're hearing behind the scenes. What, yeah, what, and what I, I think some of that too is, look, Texas got close to climbing the mountaintop and then they got hit, knocked back down, and they were really close. Isaiah Bond and Nye Black were really close, even closer, overtime game, right? to climb in the mountaintop. They got knocked back down. They actually lost to the eventual national champion. So I think this is a great team for Sark to coach because they're going to be hungry. These guys, a lot of those guys, this is their last shot at it. Whether you're going pro early or you're a senior, exhausted your eligibility or seventh or eighth year senior in college football now. But this is a team that's experienced. They have, and we talk about an NCAA basketball tournament all, all the time. These guys have been in the big games. They've been in the NCAA tournament before. This is a Texas team that has a lot of players that were in a college football playoff last year. Yep. And it's quarterback that's back, four starting <laughs> offensive linemen that are back. And they all ended the season. When they look back on it now, man, we had a really – that was a really good season for Texas football. The, the, the first – Rod, you went through this. The first 20 days after that season's over, you got a bad taste in your mouth yep. because you think you could have won one or two more games. I think this is a great team for Sark to coach because I think these guys are going to be hungry this year. What do, what do you think, Rod? You agree with that? You think that because of the Washington game, I, I know you were talking about something that Michael Taft was going on about in one of your interviews with him with third and Longhorn and those kind of things. What what do you what do you sense uh there from talking to the guys a little bit? Well, I've, I've heard multiple guys, and even one of the interviews that CJ did as well. I've heard multiple guys talk about 12 yards away. So I guess that's how far they were from scoring a touchdown going to the college football playoff. Um, so and it's it's also something I think that is echoed in Sark's new mantra about obsession, right? I'm obsessed to how close I was. I was that close, um, and yet we didn't get there. I, I remember something similar with us, and it wasn't quite the same. We got blown out in 2000 by the national champions, uh, the Oklahoma Sooners, and there really was in that offseason for us like an obsession um, because, man, that team had won the national title, our belief was, all right, that's the defending national title and our rival. We got to go beat them next year. And our everything that we do is about playing to that standard, beating our rival, which is also the defending national champion, right? That to beat a man, you got to beat the man, that kind of mentality. So there is, an obs- I think, the, an obsession. Um, and it cannot be a collective one when you are that close. And it's good to have everybody on the same page, everybody with the same crystallized focus on the same goal. And that can be powerful. When everybody is moving in the same direction and everybody has the same thing within their sights. And for this team, it seems like that is the case. All the guys that I talk to, you know, they've t- they've talked, they're talking about championships. They're talking about playing, you know, to the end of to January 20th, right? They're, they're speaking into existence. So I'm, I'm, I'm with Jerry. I, I think this group as a whole, uh, the leaders, and whether it be Sark, he get what you emphasize, and he's emphasizing. All right, what's the next step for us? We got to the college football playoff last year. We got to the semifinals. The next step is the championship for us. Yeah, deeds left undone, right? Sure. You, you yeah. want to you want to finish the you want to finish the circle there. Uh, all right, to, just to recap: quarterback, uh, a, a team strength, team speed, athleticism improving. Uh, according to Jerry, I think that that was good. Uh, Rod, scheme versatility. You went in depth on. Uh, we also talked about uh, the offensive line, clearly what the, the fans thought. Uh, and then also we had TBD makers, defensive ends, playmakers, um, the depth at kicker, all right, uh, running back and wide receiver, as well as Burt Auburn finished up by uh, what we were talking about with that hunger. 
I, I wonder if there's anything else. I'm sure there are going to be other small, nuanced strengths to this team. But right now, that's where we're at. Hopefully, hey, look, we might turn around midway through the season and say the defensive tackle group, given all the guys they got coming in, might have turned the corner, given that they got three new bodies that are all upperclassmen. Mm-hmm. And Jermaine Lole, Bill Norton, and Tia Savea to mix along with Alfred Collins, Jure Bledsoe, Vernon Broughton, Sadir Mitchell, uh, Aaron Bryant. You may be looking at a different – I mean, just don't know. These are the ones, though – for right now, we feel pretty strong. You agree I with think, that? I was. I think we, we might have missed one, though. I think we might have missed one. It might be, and Jerry hinted at it, the return game, although it was a strength last year, should be a strength once again. I mean, a real one. And now you lose Xavier Worthy. He's probably the best power return in the country. But you may replace Keelan Robinson, who's the best kickoff returner in that draft, with a kickoff returner, as uh, Jerry brought up, who's better. So maybe return game potentially. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the one. Thinking back on it now that we missed, that's two fault. Is two things, uh, or we may look back on player development. Player development under Steve Sarkeesian, I, I think, is a strength. I think we're going to see guys get better. Um, and then I'll say, here's the other one. I would say it's maybe outside the team uh, expectations and excitement of a fan base. These guys. It, for a while there, Ron, you covered it. It wasn't great to be a Texas football player for a few years. It was you weren't. Everything wasn't positive. Now yep. there's positivity, and it does matter with a team. It can drag. It can drag you down the other way. You have a fan base. Look at uh, all these people behind me. Uh, look at all those people behind. Me. <laughs> that matter. It does matter. I agree with that. It's, yeah, that's a power. All the BBs in the box, as Mac and the late great DK I would say, BBs in the box, baby, and they are in the box right now. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> all right, all right. That's gonna do it uh, for the strengths for season twenty twenty four. We'll see if uh, these things change and monitor them over the rest of the summer uh, as we hear about uh, different comings and goings of uh, players and improvement, et cetera. Uh, but anyways, uh, this is a. I thought it was a good conversation. Thanks, guys. Great. I appreciate you guys. Uh, For Rod Babers and Jerry Hamilton, I'm Bobby Burton. This has been On Texas Football. Hook them. Hook them.